This week, we are talking about something smoky, something peaty, something meaty, something delicious, but most importantly, affordable. Welcome back, Dram Fam, to the Whiskey Diary. This week we've got an awful lot to talk about, so I'm not going to beat around the bush, we're going to get straight to it. This week we are taking a look at the Ardner Merkin CS0222. This is a no age statement whiskey from the Ardner Merkin distillery. This is of course a Highland, cask strength bottled up at 58 0.7% ABV. It is unchill filtered. It is natural color. It's made with barley, peated to 30 ppm. It is 65 pounds on Master of Malt and it comes in a 70 centiliter bottle. It is a vatting of, let me check my notes, 45 bourbon barrels, five of which were unpeated, five sherry hogsheads all unpeated. How do I know that? Let me tell you. So before I go talking about the actual liquid that's in the bottle, I'm gonna tell you about something that I think is pretty cool. Some of you may know this, some of you don't. Um, for a living, I am a software engineer. I write code for various things, including blockchain applications, but overall, I'll pretty much write code for anything. Well, on the back of this bottle, there is a QR code. Now, if you scan that QR code, it will tell you almost everything there is to know about this bottle. There is an incredible amount of information that you can find on their website, including, but not limited to, the barley varieties, the temperatures of the water at various stages, the fermentation times, the hydrometer readings, which is like a bobbing thing that you put in it. It tells you what the alcohol content or the kind of the sugar content and whatever else is of the liquid at any given time. And it tells you the cask recipes specifically with cask numbers listed. It's an insane amount of information. Now this information is recorded on the blockchain and before you all go recoiling and at the risk of sounding condescending, I want to dispel just a couple of myths about blockchain technology. Because data is stored on a blockchain, which is fundamentally just a database spread across lots of different computers, it does not mean that it's an NFT. It does not mean that some 18 year old kid driving a rented Lambo is going to tell you on Twitter that you need to hodl it. And it has absolutely nothing to do with cryptocurrency. By storing this information on a blockchain, it just means that that information is, for all intents and purposes, unchanged. It's a permanent record of where this bottle came from and what makes it up. Now I find this really interesting for two main reasons. Firstly, if you are a bit of a whiskey nerd, a self-confessed whiskey nerd like myself, you might find this stuff super interesting. You can find out, you know, does this particular variety of barley actually make a difference in the liquid? Does a longer fermentation time really yield maybe, I don't know, a heavier mouthfeel? Do these hydrometer readings um, show inconsistencies between batches? You can choose to read into as much or as little information as you like, but the point is it's there. Secondly, as a business, to me as a consumer, it demonstrates honesty, transparency, a commitment to traceability and accountability about the product that they're producing. Now, realistically, do you care about the strike temperature of the first waters? Probably not. Does the variety of barley used do anything for you when it comes down to the price and the liquid in the glass? Highly unlikely. But the point is, it's there. To me, it kind of demonstrates that this is a distillery that has respect for the consumer. Whether we want the information or not, they've chosen to provide it. It demonstrates their accountability in everything that we're talking about. No smoke, no mirrors, no marketing guff. Well, I'm sure there is some marketing guff somewhere along the lines, but at the end of the day, we can choose to make our own decisions. That's not to say companies that don't share that sort of information, don't have honesty or integrity. But when you're a new brand with very little kind of reputation so far in the market, I think that's a really, really nice thing to come to market with. But that's enough about that. It's whiskey time. <laughs> 
right off the rip. It's light and it's smoky. A really nice, bright, zesty, citrus kind of grapefruity thing going on. Some really nice saltiness, a really nice brininess. That smoke's starting to darken up a little bit. Has a really nice farmhousey, fusty, farmyardy kind of vibe going on. Overall, bright smoke, bright citrus notes, a bit of a fusty meatiness going on there. Onto the palette. right away thick and oily properly mouth coating wonderful heavy like black peppery smoke that citrus is coming through now as well really nice kind of bitter lemon almost a little bit tonic watery as well a little bit of an effervescence on the back i've really started to get through that palette it develops a really nice sweet salted caramel really nice sugary kind of note and then on the back end of that it's starting to get really meaty, really savoury, umami, kind of bovril vibes. Finish wise, peppery, quite dry, but relatively balanced. A lot of that sweetness is starting to calm down now and a bit more of those dry smoky notes are coming back. Kind of like a pink peppercorn kind of vibe, a little bit ashy, a little bit tannic. And right on the tail end, kind of lingering chocolatey coffee kind of vibe. Going back in, a lot more of the sweet smoke coming through now. A lot of those chocolate notes as well, right across the palate. And overall, just a little tiny bit sweeter than it was the first time round. So overall, what do I think? I think this is a wonderful, big, delicious, full-on experience of a whiskey. I absolutely love it. As I'm starting to kind of get back in to pee, I tried a little experiment recently. There'll be a video coming on that. I did nothing but pee for a week, and I have to say it has reinvigorated my palate for pee. But as I've started getting into those pee-tier whiskies, I'm, I'm starting to really enjoy that kind of farmyardy fusty kind of hay-like quality. I'm really starting to enjoy those bigger, meatier, kind of more savory drams. £65 for this, in my opinion, is a fantastic price. I really do feel like this is a, a whiskey that you're getting your money's worth. Maybe I'm a touch biased by the, um, by the uh, transparency of it all, but when I drink this, I, f I really do feel like this is a whiskey with some honesty, some integrity, kind of a no bullshit whiskey, which I'm really into. If you are a fan of the Loch Lomond peated single grain, if you are a fan of Kleinlish, if you are a fan of Ben Nevis, I can imagine this being right up your street. It's got some smoke, don't get me wrong, it's not like a Laphroaig smoky slap in the face, but it's definitely a wonderful, smoky, peaty, meaty whiskey. This was one of the Oswa nominations for best whiskey, and in my opinion, that was very, very well deserved. I think this is uh, an exceptional liquid from a brand that I'm really, really excited to see some more from. But anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you all very much for watching. If you've liked this video, please do click the like button down below. And if you'd like to support the channel, please do consider subscribing. Let me know down in the comments if you've picked this up or not and what your thoughts are. If you've had anything else from Ardna Merkin, because as I say, I'm personally very, very excited. And on that note, Slanchevar.